If you've ever recorded a DI source and got less than desirable results, today's plugin might actually be the fix for that. Welcome back to the Home Studio Simplified channel. My name is Robert McClellan, and this channel exists to simplify the complexities of the home studio and to help you make professional sounding music in a less than professional space. Now, whether you're in a home studio or even a professional studio, there's a wide variety of reasons why you would want to record a DI source. Sometimes that would even be alongside an amp or a guitar pedal, some other kind of effects processor. Recording a DI source along with an affected signal can be great for reamping guitars later or for giving the artist the liberty to create a sound that helps them to get the greatest performance that they possibly can, but maybe it doesn't fit into the mix. With a DI source recorded, now you can take and manipulate that piece of audio inside your DAW to fit well within a mix and yet still get the greatest performance that you can out of the artist that's in your studio. Likewise, DI sources are a great option for parallel processing, especially when it comes to something like an acoustic guitar. Now, most of the time, the reason why these recordings are frowned upon is because they sound very dry, and sterile. Let's see if the plugin that we're gonna look at today can actually help to fix some of that. All right, I have a project here from a client and this is a perfect example as to why you would need something to help fix a DI source. As you can see here on this electric lead track, the incoming audio signal is very low. In fact, if you play this in context with the mix, I had to increase the gain by eight dBs just to get it up to speed where it could actually be heard. This is what it sounds like now. It's almost inaudible. Now, hopefully this is where the DI fix will come in to save the day. Okay, so now on the screen before you is the DI fix. Now, before we get into what each one of these knobs or the switches do upon this particular plugin, let's just go ahead and listen to some sound examples right off the bat. I'm gonna go ahead and play the track again with this plugin enabled, and we're gonna try to get a more desirable sound. Okay, so as you can see, we went from getting like negative 40 dBs of gain, now we're up around to negative 6 dBs, and I didn't really hear any weird artifacts or clipping or anything like that internally going on within the plugin. So already it sounds like if nothing else, it's gonna be great for boosting lower level signals. The next thing that you'll notice is that I added intensity using this intensity knob at a percentage of zero to 100%. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna figure out what exactly this knob is doing to the incoming audio signal and if it's actually helping or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this piece of audio with the intensity at 0% and slowly start increasing that intensity to see if I hear an audible difference. Amazingly enough, I do hear just a slight bit of a difference. However, it's very, very subtle, even with the intensity at 100%. One of the things that I notice with a lot of plugin companies these days is that whenever they create something like an intensity knob, when you put that intensity knob at 100%, it sounds very garbled or very, very processed. In this case, it seems like they have toned down that intensity knob so much that I almost don't even hear it working until I take it completely off. So even at 100%, it sounds like it's just doing exactly what it's supposed to do, which is literally just taking that dry, sterile DI source that I was originally given and putting a little bit of roundness on it with some saturation. Okay, so I have before you here on the screen the Span plugin as well as the DI FX set with an intensity of 0%. Let's go ahead and set this now to where we're gonna see an average and a max of the frequency spectrum that's being given through this. I've went ahead and looped a section of this audio so that we can actually see exactly what is being affected a little bit easier on your screen. Thank you. 
Okay, so after listening to the loop a couple times through, this is the average frequency spectrum that we're getting from that plugin at 0%. Now let's go ahead and analyze this at 100% and we'll see if there's any difference. Okay, now here's the frequency spectrum that we're getting after increasing the intensity to 100%. Let's overlay the two and see what the significant differences are between 0% intensity and 100% intensity. Okay, so as you can see on your screen, this is 0% intensity and this is 100% intensity. Now, just by quickly switching back and forth between the two, you can definitely tell that it is adding something to the signal in fact, it's more of that rounding that I was just talking about earlier. Let's go ahead and begin to lower the opacity of the 0% intensity and see it overlaid on top of the 100% so we can see a visual representation of just exactly where they differ. So remember, purple is 0% intensity and blue is 100% intensity. Okay, so by looking at them overlaid on top of each other, you can definitely tell that at 100% intensity, there's a little bit more of the sub lows that's being added into the signal, as well as some rounding off in the midsection. However, in the upper mids, not only is there a higher increase of fundamental frequencies within those regions, but it looks as if things are also rounded off a bit as a whole. This is exactly what I was hearing to my ears, as subtle as it was. So now we have a visual representation of exactly what this plugin is adding to the input signal. Okay, now let's begin to take a look at some of the knobs that are on here and explain exactly what they do. First off, you can see that it is definitely resizable as I've made it rather large on the screen and it doesn't look like there's any kind of video rendering artifacts that's been added to that. So that's a plus. First off, let's take a look at the very top here where we have our plugins presets menu. By clicking on this, you can see that there's already several different presets included under the hood. In the upper left hand corner here, we can see a power on and a power off button. This would be essentially a bypass. And one of the great things that this company has implemented that not a lot of other companies are doing is that they actually have an intelligent way of bypassing their plugins to where you don't get any noticeable clicks or pops, which can be great if you want to automate this on or off. Just to the right of that is the switch for the bass DI and guitar DI. This switch changes the internal algorithms to fit the incoming signal the best. The next knob that we see is the in. This is literally just an input control, which is basically a gain in. The same can be stated for the out. This is literally just an output gain. Likewise, a lot of these parameters can be set by simply double clicking them, which allows you to then enter a new value based off of what your needs might be. Next, we'll take a look at the intensity knob. The intensity knob blends the dry and the wet signals. 100% means only the process signal goes to the output and lower values add the original unfixed material. And lastly, if you right click on the plugin, you can see several different options there as well. Okay, well, I hope you found this brief review of the DI fix informative. If there's something that you would like to see added to this plugin that's maybe not currently on it, go ahead and drop that in the comment section down below. I know personally, I would like to see a saturation knob added to this so you could treat it sort of like a sans amp. Likewise, if you'd like to get your hands on this plugin, I have included a link in the description below as well to make that easier for you to find. Before we go, remember there's still just a few days left to enter into the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Likewise, the doors are still open till the end of October for the Rocket Fuel Bundle. If you'd like to know more about what the Rocket Fuel Bundle is, I've also included a link in the description to that as well. And last but not least, we will be hosting the 10,000 subscriber celebration here on the channel live on November 3rd, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're gonna be giving away over $2,000 worth of plugins and tutorial courses on the live stream, so you don't wanna miss this. All right, guys, until next time, remember we can dream alone, we can create alone, but together we can achieve so much more.